Welcome back to Orange Nation. It's Parents Week on Artist of the Day. And uh, Mr. Infanti predict they're picked uh, the, the young rascals. Uh, too many fish in the sea is the first one. See, do you know something? I know their music. This is going to sound weird. I didn't know they were Caucasian my yeah. whole life. They, Yeah, they have a different sound. So I said yesterday, you're either going to know all of them or none of them. I Did thought, you know all of them? Uh, I didn't know all of them. I didn't know that one, but I thought this was a Motown artist. Gotcha. If that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll learn about the Young Rascals throughout the show today, our artist of the day. But uh, right now, we're going to bring on our good friend, Eric Dievendorf. Uh, as we go to our guest line, if you happen to be watching us on QSportsTalk.com, you see uh, Devo joining us now. Uh, always great to talk hoops with you, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing good. Appreciate you guys having me. All right, before we jump into this team, uh, I, I do want to get into you know your latest uh, community venture. I know you're teaming up with uh, Latavius Murray and some others uh, for this uh, this turkey drive uh, in advance of Thanksgiving. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this is going to be our sixth annual turkey drive, um, our second uh, year partnering up with Latavius and the Heart and Tay Train Foundation. Uh, and it's been a bunch of support throughout the community from a bunch of local companies, um, you know, PPS, Printing and Promotional Solutions, BHG, PTM Solar, um, Tops, Wegmans, uh, a bunch of others. I know I miss a lot. Uh, don't get upset at me, but the support has just been unreal and it's allowed us to you know, keep expanding on this turkey drive every year. Like I said, it's our, our sixth year, and it's going to be the most turkey dinners that we've um, handed out so far. It's going to be 450-plus turkey dinners. So um, just looking forward to a Saturday, 12 to 3, uh, at Boys and Girls Club uh, at Central Village in Syracuse on, in, on Van Buren Street, I believe it is. Um, and, and just looking forward to getting together with a bunch of volunteers. we got like 50 volunteers helping out, coming to hand out turkey dinners. And uh, and obviously, you know, see the families and the kids and uh you know, leave with some turkey dinners and some smiles. You know, Eric, you talk about all the corporate sponsors. Is there any way that, like, the average person can get involved and help out? Yeah, I mean, we've had a bunch of uh, personal donations uh, from individuals. They'll write check out, checks out to the foundation, ED23 Foundation, or they could go uh, on the website, ED23hoops.com or ed 23 um, foundation.org and there's a donation tab on there that they could help out with so uh, yeah we've, we've had a bunch of individuals uh, donate and, and you know cash and also uh, you know just canned goods and non-perishable items and then obviously you spoke about the corporate sponsors um, you know that that allows us to do to do a little bit more uh, each year so just thankful for the personal do donations and um, and the corporate sponsors as well. Eric, you've got your hand in so many of these things. Uh, why do you do it? What, you know, why why do you you give back the way that you do to this community? Uh, I mean, every year, I, I you know, I just see um, you know how it helps and impacts the community, and and not only the people that we're giving the turkey dinners to, but the people who come and help and volunteer. You know, I, I see um, you know a lot of them go off and do their own thing, and and I think that's a, a big thing that we want to be able to do to help inspire and motivate people to be involved but also be able to branch off and, and, and do their own thing you know have their own turkey drive or, or you know coat, coat drive or sneaker and cleat drive whatever it may be the more we have of these events um you know the better for our community the more people we're going to help so um you know we don't just want to be able to do it we want to be able to inspire other people to do it um and, and then also you know um expanded and helping more people who, who really need the turkey dinners in the community of syracuse well said, Eric, and thank you for all you do for this uh, for this community. Yeah, Paul. I do have one more thing. You know, what about people that need the turkey dinners? Is there a way they can? What What do they have to do to go get them? So uh, that's a good question, Paul, because we've teamed up with a lot of organization organizations throughout Syracuse. Uh, you know, Rescue Mission, um, Catholic Charities of Syracuse, uh, 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 what a cool kids. Um, I forget cool kids clubhouse or something like that. But we we have a few organizations that they come and pick up. You know, thirty to fifty. Uh, turkey dinners and, and hand them out to their families and also um, you can go on social media um, and, and uh, at ed23 hoops and, and see the flyers and uh, we, we just been doing a lot of word of mouth and, and getting it out there on social media and I know a lot of people are um, you know letting people know about it and it, you know what Paulie and Steve it, it's crazy because a lot of people who need it. I mean, these these are people who have regular jobs, you know, and, and have have nine to five jobs. And it's, you know, just the way the economy is and how the prices are, are raising. 
you know, people need it more now than ever. So, uh, you know, we've been spreading the word, getting it out on social media and, and word of mouth. And, um, you know, come Saturday, we're just we're just hoping to uh, you know have a lot of people in line to, to get turkey dinners. What kind of dog does Eric Devendorf have? Because I can hear your dog oh, yeah. in the background. He just he he let out a big uh, yawn. <laughs> 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 he's a what kind of dog is it? So he's a lab and a whippet mix. He's like thirty pounds. He's he doesn't bark much unless you. Uh, I guess he feels like he's he's strong or something. But he is fast as lightning. <laughs> Is, is that the turn this interview is going to go now? You're yeah. a dog person, yeah, Paulie. Yeah, I am. What's your dog's name? Chip. Paul, you knew I, I, I thought you knew I had a dog. I didn't, no, I knew you had a dog. I wanted, I wanted to just let the, the, the world know. I I'm, had, I'm, it's a theater of the mind. Eric, I had a dog when I was a kid named Chip. So there you go. That's a great name. Chocolate Chip. Chocolate Chip. And, yeah, and you know I, what? That's what we actually, my daughter calls him that, Chocolate Chip. That's, she's the one. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, she named him that. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, all right. How about that? Uh, all right, let's talk some hoops now, and we got to talk about this comeback uh, on Tuesday. You know, for 25 minutes, it looked like SU was dead and buried, and then, you know, they go to the press, they come alive. They needed a lot of things to go right, and a lot of things did get, did go right in that comeback. One thing Paulie and I have been talking about the last couple of days, um, you know, the, we've been pondering the question, are we more encouraged or discouraged based on, you know, what we saw in that game? So we'll pose that question to you. Are you more encouraged with the comeback and the win or discouraged with the rebounding and, you know, falling behind by 24 i mean i'm encouraged i mean anytime i don't care who you're playing anytime you get down by 24 26 points that's tough to come especially with you know 10 12 minutes left in the second half so um i mean you got to look at the effort and energy that they had in the last 10 to 12 minutes that they didn't have for the first 30 minutes i mean it, you know the first 30 minutes they, they just looked lethargic you know we were i was watching the game in studio and uh, offensively in the half court, they looked stagnant. They had no execution, no movement. And that's something that they're going to have to work on going forward because if, you know, obviously this team has to be able to play up tempo. They have to ha play in transition and get those type of buckets, but there's going to be times where they're playing in the half court and, you know, you have to be able to execute. It can't just be give the ball to Judah and put your head down and, and try to make a tough finish and, and, and do that. But and Chris Bell shot the ball. Well, um, you know, we, I think shooting and rebounding are the two things that we're really struggling with. Obviously, defensively, um, you know, they, the guys that need to work on rotations and communications and things like that. But to be able to have, you know, Chris Bell and Justin Taylor or even another guy just come in and space the floor a little bit more for, for Judah and J.J., I know we talked about that before. It's just going to make it easier offensively in the half court. Now, if, if we're able to get up and down and, and play up tempo like that, a good majority of the game, then I think that's going to be better for us because it's it's easier to make decisions like that. You don't have to, you know, do it in the half court versus a set defense. Um, but overall, I, I think it's encouraging, man. Yeah, we don't want to lose the rebounding battle by 12 rebounds to a, a Colgate team who's, you know, probably not big. They're not athletic. They're they're not really fast, but they are well coached. They're experienced, and, and these guys have played against Cuse before, so they know what to expect, and, and they're going to play hard. It, at the end of the day, it comes down to energy and effort. And they didn't have it for the first 30 minutes, talking about Syracuse, in the last 10 to 12 minutes, they did. You know, the, the Colgate turned it over 12 times. They only made one three in the second half. Um, and, and like you say, you got to, uh, you know, look at the press. It was it was because of the press that turned the game around. And, I, Steve, I think we've seen that before with Syracuse. You know, Coach Bam used to go to that. When we get in trouble, he'd put the press on you. And, and you know, we've seen a lot of times it turned the game around. And, you know, that was uh, – same time, same thing that happened, uh, obviously, against Colgate. I don't know if you ever played in a tournament as big as the, this Maui class. I don't know any Syracuse team has played in a tournament. Well, yeah, I've like never been Maui out of New York State. I, I never got out of New York State. Yeah, yeah, no, was... you, yeah no, you did, didn't you? We we went to Kansas. Oh, Kansas City. Okay, you're right. That was thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's it's um it's not Maui, but it's and it's we won Kansas. it. We won that one too. Yeah. 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 You know, how do you prepare for a gauntlet of teams like they could possibly face in Maui? I mean, you just got to go out there and compete. I think these guys are excited. I mean, it, look, we have the talent. You know, I mean, it's just about guys cementing their roles, knowing what they have to do. I mean, it, offensively, it just looks – everyone looks everywhere right now. They're, you know, Judah, sometimes he's going to the basket. He's forcing too much. And, and I said it a while ago. He has to be the one who – gives his teammates confidence we know we can get a shot we know we can do it by itself but start off early finding guys and you know putting them in their spots and and making them feel comfortable uh but i think these guys are ready i mean tennessee the first game i think they're seventh in the country it's going to be a battle they're a big physical team and um obviously you know early on we haven't really shown a 
too much physicality, I guess, <laughs> especially with Naheem. He's another, he's another guy. Like he's, you can't get pushed under the rim if you're seven four, man. You, you're letting this guy six seven, six eight push you under the rim, and your back is the other way where where it's supposed to be. So he, I mean, that's another area that we got to work on. But um, I, I think these guys are ready. I think they're excited. I mean, they're three and zero. Oh. I mean, it, I know it was a, you know, it wasn't the way I guess we wanted to win against Colgate, but we won the game. And, and you're going in with a clean slate. Uh, against some great teams in Maui. I know they're they're excited just to be in Maui. I, I, I'm upset that I didn't get to, you know, hop on that plane. But uh, I think these guys will be ready to go and compete. And, and that's what they got to do, just go out there and compete and, and see what happens. Yeah, uh, Joe, someone in our chat has a great stat. Joe Lenardi has uh, uh, three one seeds, a two seed, and a three seed in that tournament yeah. for the NCAA it is loaded. tournament. That, <laughs> so. that field is loaded, uh, no doubt about it. All right. Eric, I want to ask you about the about Benny Williams. What, what do you make of this whole situation? Suspended for a week, missed the last exhibition, the first two regular season games. Obviously, didn't look good in in his return. Um, you know, maybe that's to be expected. Uh, you know, shaking off some rust. Uh, what, what what do you expect? What what can be expected out of him moving forward this year? Uh, we need him. I, I mean, you saw what happened to Justin Taylor when he was in that four spot. They're you know they're taking advantage of that and putting him under the rim. There's going to be other guys in that same spot who are you know, bigger than Justin Taylor, and, and they'll look at that matchup as well. But Benny needs to be out there, you know, for his defense, for his athletic ability, for him just being active out there. He'll, he'll make an impact. Obviously, the conditioning is in question right now. So, you know, I think this, um, you know, five, four or five days or whatever going into Tennessee will help him out, get back in shape. But we need him, man. Like, you can't have – uh, Justin Taylor playing at the four going into ACC play. You, you, you got to have, um, you know, versatile lineups and, you know, where Malik can come in and play the five, Benny at the four, Taylor, and maybe even Bell, you know, at the two. But, you know, we talk about JJ and, and, and Judah. So he's, he's a factor, man. He, he's a guy that we need. And I think if he can just get his head on straight and lock in, I mean, he can make an impact on both ends of the floor. And, and, and don't look to attack the bucket first. We got to get him in the area like the mid post area where he could just turn and rip and go instead of, you know, catching the ball 20, 22 feet from the rim. That's, that's not his strength right there. This is important information. Breaking sports news. You hear it first. That's right. We've got breaking news with Eric Tiefendorf, uh coming up November. <laughs> I got to check the date. November 29th, I believe. <laughs> The Eric Devendorf show is returning. Excellent. With uh, Chris Joseph. That's breaking news to me as well. Yes. Yeah, so there you go. That's why it's breaking news, Steve. <laughs> All right. It's back. I love it. Can't wait. Good news for everybody. I have nothing to do with it. So it'll just be those two also. <laughs> uh, Devo, any final thoughts before we let you go about the turkey drive or the show returning, Q's basketball, anything else you want to touch on before we let you go? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Paulie said it uh, November 29th, uh, starting Wednesday, 10 to 11. Um, going throughout the season, uh, Devo and Chris Joe show, Chris Joe show is back. So I'm excited for that to get back on with my brother and talk Q's hoops and, um, get a lot of great guests on. And, and also tomorrow night, um, you know, anybody in the community, if you're around 7 PM Syracuse crunch game, we've partnered up with the crunch as well. Uh, when you go into the entrances, they'll have uh, donation drop-off boxes at each one for your canned goods and non-perishable items. And that'll help us, uh, Saturday. Uh, with our turkey dinner so 7 p.m tomorrow if, if you don't have anything to do come by bring some canned goods drop them off at the crunch game and then saturday uh, if you're not doing anything 12 to 3 at boys and girls club central village thanks guys i appreciate you all right, Eric Devendorf. Uh, and with that, we'll uh, we'll hit a timeout. Uh, we've got two more guests lined up back-to-back. We've got Dr. Ryan Smart with our weekly SOS house call coming up next. Then John Schmelk, 1245, back after this on ESPN Radio.